And now this is case uh, 18. So here we have punch, and you can see that it's predominantly a peri, eccrine, and neural um, lymphocytic infiltrate. Yeah, and this is kind of hard because right here it's all lymphs, right? I mean. Right. You know, like whenever I think perineural, obviously in the section we're in, I would think of leprosy, but, you know, that would be more histocytic. So, and with the lymphocytes, yeah, sorry, keep going. I apologize. So with the lymphocytes, then I'm kind of like in my superficial and deep um, differential, and that could include lupus. It could include Lyme, which would be infectious. Um, also, I guess you would consider syphilis because it's a great mimicker. Yeah, and also things I see, I feel like I see peri, um, periacrine lymphocyte aggregates also in perniosis, which of course has a lot of overlapping features with, with lupus sometimes. Um, and I've also seen it in bug bites, although you would expect to have a lot more inflammation up top too, and a lot of EOs, but I feel like I often see perivascular, I'm sorry, periacrine lymphocyte aggregates. This I think is a really hard case because there might be a little tiny granuloma here, but boy, it's subtle. And there's, I mean, up here, there's, very little except right over here there's one granuloma and it's around a vessel a perivascular granuloma is basically a perineural granuloma until proven otherwise we know that in in leprosy we tend to get granulomas around the nerves well remember nerves and vessels even at the small level track alongside one another so anytime i see granulomas near a vessel i suspect that there may be near a nerve as well even if i can't really visualize the nerve itself so that's one little clue to always think of and um here's one that i think is actually around a nerve more obviously right here this little slightly wavy collagen structure in the middle probably represents i can't be sure on this scan but i bet you this is a small nerve and the perineurium is totally distended by histiocytes right so this is kind of a tight granuloma tightly cuffing around the nerve and it's kind of linear and elongated that's classic for leprosy tuberculoid um, or posse uh, vacillary leprosy usually and here let me show you a couple examples this is a, an, ex, uh, an example of tuberculoid leprosy the granulomas are much more obvious here and the cells um, are linear or serpiginous because they're tracking along neural structures and around vessels too and they tend to be much more dense cytoplasm less of that loose fluffy cytoplasm like you see in in lepromatous leprosy they're kind of almost sarcoid like granulomas here there's a nerve right here and they're wrapped a sarcoidal granuloma wrapped around the nerve i will point out that um, uh, publications in the, the past few years, or if it's been a little longer than that, I've shown that you can actually have perineural granulomas in sarcoidosis also. So this is not definitive for leprosy, but if I do this and I do a stain and I don't find organisms, I usually will send this to, for molecular testing to further exclude uh, the possibility of leprosy. And in the end, if everything we've done doesn't find organisms, then I would recommend that the clinicians treat this with, you know, like they would treat sarcoidosis and obviously do additional clinical work up to see if the lungs are involved or whatever, but try to use, you know, immune suppressing drugs to, to see if the granulomas get better. If the process gets better, well, guess what? Probably it was sarcoid or some other uh, reactive granulomatous process, not leprosy or infection. If it gets worse, then stop the steroids or whatever treatment you have them on and do another biopsy and see if organisms are there. And that was a, a kind of the basic approach that was given to me uh, by a leprosy expert, actually, um, who has seen many, many cases, says that that's how they deal with it when they've done the fight stain and it's negative and they've done um, they've done molecular and it's negative because sometimes in tuberculoid leprosy, the organisms are so sparse that you can't see them and even molecular won't be able to detect them because they're so rare that there's just not enough nucleic acid there to amplify. Here's a, a, another example from low power and you can see how linear the granulomas are. But this one, when you get closer, even though it looks linear like that last one, the granulomas, the histiocytes have a more frothy, loose cytoplasm and you begin to see globi. So this was lepromatous and lepromatous often can make sheets like we saw in our case earlier. But don't be surprised that sometimes it can make this suprigenous granuloma pattern. The difference is that the cells of these suprigenous granulomas look different than the, the tuberculoid leprosy where they're real dense pink. And I know it's a little bit subtle at first. The easy thing is when you do the fight stain, if you see one or a few organisms, probably tuberculoid. When you see a thousand organisms, it's going to be on the lepromatous multibacillary end of the spectrum, like, like right there. Okay, just a couple more and then we're done.